My presentation today is teaching multiple defenses made simple. And I think in this day and age when you have limited practice time, I think if you want to do uh, multiple defenses, I think this presentation can help you. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I believe Mount Anthony never played his own defense in all the years I coached, but at times it might have looked like his own defense, so we'll cover some of that stuff. Uh, first thing you have to do is sell defense and make it a very important thing, very important part of your program. We did that and our kids bought into it, and because of that I think we had some success. Uh, the first steps for all this multiple defense is you have to install certain, you have to teach various drills and uh, terminology. All right, some of the drills and terms that I think you have to uh, put in when we're teaching defense. And we started right off with stance. Uh, Bob Knight had a... Uh, a deal that if you assume kids know something, then you're making an ass of you and me. So we can't assume that they know the proper stance. So we would teach stance every year, feet shoulder distance apart, head up, butt down. We'd also have our kids palms up when they were defending the dribbler. That way, instead of reaching out and clawing the guy, which is a foul, they might just flick at it and deflect the ball. So uh, the next thing was ball side and help side and uh, we would take and put tape down the middle of the floor from basket to basket so that our kids would know that one side of the floor is the ball side and that's the side of the floor the ball is on the side of the floor that, that the ball is not on is the help side and there were rules if you were on the ball side of the floor then you were in a deny and you were not going to let that man catch the ball if you're on the help side of the floor you were one foot right on that mid-court line. And that kind of leads us to the next term, ball you man. And that's the alignment you're in. Now, if you're on the ball side, you have the ball, then you, and then the man. So you're right out there denying the ball. If you're on the help side of the floor, you have ball, you, man, but you're away from that man and you're in the center of the floor. So once we have those terms, then we all are speaking the same language. Key to all this is ball pressure. And uh, no matter what defense we're in, the man on the ball has to be pressuring the ball. He is dictating to him or her where they're going to go. You are not just standing there. You are always pressuring the ball and directing them so that you're dictating what you want them to do. You're not reacting to them. Now, to get this, we start off with zigzag drill. You probably all do the zigzag drill. That's when there's a man with a ball and a defender. We have three steps on the zigzag drill. Step one, we have your hands behind your back. And we do this because we want to stress proper footwork, you between the ball and the basket. So in the zigzag drill, step one, I'm forcing you left, forcing you right, forcing you left, forcing you right. We do this cross court. You dribble. When you get to that end, I dribble back against you. And we do this over and over. Step two, we would tell our people to have active hands but not try to steal the ball because we don't want you planting your feet and reaching in. So we would just be palms up, zigzagging, zigzagging. Step three is you against me. And this is not just a waltz where we just go through the motions. This is, I'm trying to stop you and you're trying to beat me. And it's very competitive. We would do this one full court. And we'd zigzag to half court. But at half court, I'd push you to one side. Because there's no sense letting you go to the middle of the floor. And our kids took a lot of pride in this. And if... If you got by me, then boy, I better get by you on the way back. And it was very competitive, and we do this every day, the zigzag drill. Another one that, uh, that we would do every day was one-on-one. -on -one. And in one-on-one, -on -one, we'd limit the number of dribbles. 
because we'd say, you only have three dribbles to get to the basket. You know, if you're going to be doing 15, 16, 17, that's a joke because it wouldn't happen in a game. So we'd play one-on-one, -on -one and we would try to dictate and force the person to their weak hand. Another drill that we did every day was shell drill. Shell drill is four people on offense, four on defense, two guards, two forwards, no center. The coach would stand under the basket so that he could see this. The first thing we'd do on the shell drill, step one, is the offense was not allowed to move. They were only allowed to pass the ball. Every time they passed the ball, you would jump to the ball. Now, you'd, you'd have to let the person catch it, so you would be denied, but you'd let them catch it. So when you pass to the forward, everyone jumps to the ball. Forward to guard, everyone jumps to the ball. Every time that ball is passed, you react to it. Coach under the basket is looking. Make sure that help side's got one foot on the middle of the floor. Now, also on this, you have to see the ball. You have to make sure that you always know where the ball is and your man. You can't have your back turned or anything or, or you're going to be embarrassed when that guy drives and you don't see him. So we're talking about jump to the ball. We're talking about see the ball. Step two of zigzag, we let the offense drive. They still can't move, but uh, if they think they can drive to the hoop, they're going to drive, and we're going to make sure our help side people are there to stop that ball. So now you've got see the ball, jump to the ball, and third step on zigzag. The offense can now move some. And on this, we always run it that you have to get two stops before you're done on defense. So if you don't get two, excuse me, two consecutive stops, if you don't get two consecutive stops, you're going to be on defense for a long time. Now, next step on zigzag is give and go. On this, we would, uh, the two guards and the two forwards, guard past the forward, and again, we're letting them make the pass in this drill. On this, the man guarding the guard jumps to the ball on that pass because if he doesn't jump to the ball, that guy on a give and go is going to be between him and he's just going to catch it and score. So I'm guarding you, the guard. You make the pass. I jump to the ball. Now, if you're going to run a give and go, you're doing it behind me. Now we would reverse the ball. Everyone would rotate over. We'd run a give and go on the other side. So you've now learned how to defend the give and go. We'd also run a shell drill where we'd start the ball in the middle of the floor. So the first thing we have to do now is that guard has to force the ball to one side or the other because if the ball's in the middle of the floor, there is no help side. And if there's no help side, I don't know who's going to help out and stop that drive. Okay, next thing we would do is we would run the shell drill with two guards, two forwards, but the only people defending are the guys in the forwards. So now we're really teaching denying the ball or contesting. So the two unguarded guards can pass the ball to the forward or they can pass the ball to the other guard. So now when I'm out denying, and you have to decide whether you want your kids to open to the ball on a back cut or turn their back to it. You pick that one out. I don't care. Uh, we used to open to the ball. But we are now teaching, contesting, and denying. And we're forcing that guy to run a back, court, a back cut. And I don't believe that a back cut is uh, that great a move. First off, if the guy back cuts me, the guard has to make a perfect pass. You have to catch it, and we think we're going to have someone over there on help side. Also on this drill, in addition to teaching denying and help side, the unguarded guard could occasionally take the ball into the hoop. And if he takes the ball into the hoop and you don't see the ball, it's going to be embarrassing. So that's the uh, another one. The la One of the other shell drills we do we would have an unguarded postman. So now you've got four defenders, and the man on the ball, of course, is pressuring the ball, but 
the help side is going to jump over and help on that center. If they pass the ball to the unguarded center, there should be someone there helping them. Another thing that we would do is we'd run the take a charge drill. And uh, take a charge drill looks somewhat like the two-line layup. You have two lines. The coach stands on the free throw line. The coach throws the ball to the left-hand line. The right-hand line runs in gets between that man and the basket, and there's a collision. And we would run this drill every day until taking a charge became part of uh, just an accepted thing. And we took a great deal of pride in that. Uh, our guys did not refer to the, uh, the that painted area as the paint or the key. They called that bloody nose lane because no one was going to drive that lane without one of our guys helping and either taking a charge or maybe it was a block, but no one was going to go to the hoop. And we took a great deal of pride in that. We had uh, one year we were in the finals of the New England. This was in the middle 70s. We were playing East Providence. The East Providence guard fouled out on five charge calls. After the game, he said, I never ran into anything like that. And uh, one of our guys said, well, uh, our coach thinks that's a big deal. And we, we, we try to humor him. So we just took a lot of pride in, in uh, taking charges and not letting anyone drive the lane. The other thing that we would teach, of course, is fighting over picks and hedging. We would run a two-on-two -two drill. And when, when that man set a screen, our defender would number one, talk and try to get that guard over and he would step out and hedge. And I think that's something else you've got to practice every day. And all of our drills, we stress that defense does not end until you get the ball. So, of course, we had all kind of rebounding drills also. We tried to also institute a system of talk. Uh, we would encourage our guys to talk and communicate. And our deal was... The man in the back of the defense is out there talking. He's saying to that guard, you're okay, deny, I got your back, and we're trying to talk. I know some of our guys, if they got picked, they would turn to the guy who, who didn't talk and say, what the hell are you doing? You're supposed to be talking to me. And we would encourage that. And, uh, and again, you have to do this hedging and such. So now, after you've taught all these basics and you've sold the defense, now you can institute the multiple defenses because now you've got everything done that you need to. So defense number one, we call them by colors, and that was red. That was our regular defense, our man-to-man, -man, and that's the one we play most of the time. Second defense was blue, and in blue, because blue was the color of the lane at Mount Anthony, in blue, everyone except the man on the ball who, of course, is pressuring. Everyone in blue had one foot in the lane. So now that almost looks like a zone, and uh, you would stay in the lane until the ball was passed to your man. When it was passed to your man, you jumped out, you pressured that man. So when would you use this? Well, one, you could use it. When, uh, when you're trying to clog the lane. Maybe people are driving on you and, and we're going to stop that. You could use it if you were having trouble rebounding. You could use blue if there's a big guy in there and we needed to get a lot of help. You could also use it if you were trying to protect your team from foul trouble. Next defense is white. And in white, I guess that's white like snow all over. In white, everyone is in total deny. There is no help side. The man on the ball is pressuring. Everyone else is out there, ball you man, denying the ball. Now, when would you use this? You'd use this when uh, teams are stalling and you have to have the ball. You could use this when that team is trying to take the last shot of the quarter. And again, you have to have the ball. You could also use it as a change of pace. Uh, now the real fun, combo. Combo is when we're running combinations of red, white, and blue. So let's say you're playing a team that has a great shooter. We'll say, Jason, you're guarding him, and you're in white the whole game. You are just denying him. You are not letting him touch the ball, and you know you've got all kind of help because 
everyone else is in blue. So in combo, you've got one man playing white, everyone else is in the lane playing blue, and we're forcing that man to move to get open. A lot of great shooters like to just stand there, catch the ball, and shoot. If we're in total deny, that guy's got to move without the ball. It's very frustrating. And if we force the back cut, you know you've got help. Now, if you've got two guys, you could have two people playing white and everyone else playing blue. So now it looks like you're playing a box in one or maybe a triangle in two. Oh, another time when you would use blue, I forgot, is blue is a great defense on an under-the-basket inbounds. You're not going to give up any layups because everyone is in there crowding. So now with these various combination defenses, uh, you can institute them, and all you have to do is teach those basics that we talked about, but you now have three or four different defenses. If you have any questions, us old guys like to talk on the phone, so feel free to call me. I'm at 802-442-8075. I'd be glad to talk basketball with you. Uh, I think that uh, you coaching basketball, especially in this terrible times that we're having, you're doing a great service to those kids. I know they're going to enjoy that and appreciate it. And uh, coaching is a great profession. If you stay in one town long enough, then you're fortunate enough to see some of your kids get out and be uh, valuable citizens. And you can say, maybe I had some, uh, some help on that. So coaching is a great deal. Do you have any questions, Coach?